Morena Prudo has one of the most dangerous Nen abilities in Hunter x Hunter, with both the potential and intent to destroy the world. It's a bit complicated with a lot of rules and strange interactions, but that's why this channel exists. So here's why you should be afraid of Morena. Morena Prudo is the illegitimate child of King Nasubi, current gluttonous overlord of the Kakin Empire. This makes her the half-sister of every prince currently engaged in the succession war. However, those half-siblings all came from very legitimate wombs, whereas Morena's birthing zone was rather unsanctioned. King Nasubi be he had the well he gets around and this is not entirely without strategy these illegitimate children are more than likely thrown into the world with the idea of control in mind because they often go on to become pretty serious underworld figures like broccoli and onio who are nasabi's illegitimate half brothers each of whom are marked with two razor blade scars which is interesting because if you wanted to keep these illegitimate children hidden from the world then you probably wouldn't make them so easy to identify so they're born for greatness just in a different sector of society this one down here where we don't have to Look at you. Morena, however, has other plans, as she stated, but I like this scar. Without it, I would have slid closer to death. With this scar, I was able to perch on the razor's edge. In order to destroy this dung heap of a world, I can keep trying just a little more. Which is a fancy way of saying burn it all. Morena's views of this world is that it is unjust, unsightly, and even disgusting, much like how the Karkin royalty view her. And this often goes unnoticed, but Morena also elects to wear a crown of thorns. Very important because Togashi loves his religious symbolism. In this case, referring to the crown of thorns that Jesus Christ was forced to wear before and during crucifixion. The idea was to mock him, you know, the ha ha, yeah, you're the king, the, the king of shit, or something like that. I honestly don't know what the ancient crucifixion dudes said to him. I am, of course, paraphrasing the Bible there, but that was the general intention. However, Morena has adopted this crown of her own volition. She has embraced her role not only as a false monarch, but as a preacher of a new way of living. And to complement the religious reference, Morena even has 22 of her own disciples, each devoted to her vision for the future of the world, or lack thereof. In any case, Morena converted these disciples and used them to stage a coup taking over the Haley family. But it was only then that her true power was unleashed. Morena's Hatsu is called Contagion, the Etude of Love, whereby through her saliva, often exchanged via a kiss, Morena can infect up to 22 people for a total of 23, including herself. It's unconfirmed what Nen affinity Morena falls into, but it could involve a mixture of transmutation and enhancement, as in transmuting the aura into the Contagion saliva with enhancement properties spawning later. It could also be emitting saliva with elements of manipulation, or it could just be pure specialist insanity. But once infected, these people become players in a Nen game led by Game Master Morena. Although I would say that knowing Morena, this game follows a very predictable path. Essentially, the more you kill murder, the more you get rewarded. And the more rewards you get, the easier it becomes to kill murder more people. So it's a vicious cycle over and over and over again until the world goes boom. Morena's current rules stipulate that killing a regular person grants a player one level. Meanwhile, killing a Nen user will give a player a mighty 10 levels, but even much more better, if a player manages to kill a Kakin Prince, then they will be rewarded with an astonishing 50 levels. What does that mean? Why is that important? Those are just random numbers, internet. Ned man. Well, just, just calm down. I'm about to explain. Upon becoming infected, players automatically have their aura control unlocked. You know that thing that can either take months and months of meditation or a very rough life-threatening initiation to complete. It's all just gifted instantly to these players. And every level gained results in an aura boost. So the higher your level, the more aura you have access to. And at either level 20 or level 21, both of which have been stated in the past, it's kind of contradictory, but whichever one it is, the player manifests a unique Nen ability. And for some comparison, it took Gon and Killua almost the entirety of Hunter x Hunter to accomplish this. However, the ultimate goal is reaching level 100, after which the player graduates into what is known as a member zero and is able to infect up to 22 more people. To put it pretty bluntly, it's a Nen cult and it follows your very classical cult pyramid structure. Morena sits on top with 22 of her close devoted disciples. Those disciples then gather 22 of their own devotees who then assemble 22 of their own and so on and so forth until again, world goes boom. So there's a lot of fantastic advantages that this ability provides. The main one is manifesting a Hatsu. That is a long and difficult path. There are some low level Nen users in this world that never generate their own unique ability, but Contagion fast tracks the whole process and guarantees a Nen ability regardless of any natural factors. However, one very big issue with this is that it's skipping very necessary steps. Players under the effect of Contagion don't currently have the opportunity to learn, let alone master and implement the basic principles of Nen. Concepts such as Ten, Ren, and Zetsu are the foundation 
foundation of aura control, and lacking those leaves the players extremely vulnerable. I mean, if you don't even know a basic 10, then you'll never be able to wield your aura at any sort of efficient level, because it'll just all be leaking away because you don't know how to, how to make it stay. That's what 10 does. And if you don't know Zetsu, you can never mask your appearance, so you can't really sneak up on your enemies. And that's even before we get to all of the compound principles. My god, the compound principles. As a result, it means that players can be beaten without even needing to use nan abilities, or potentially needing to invoke any aura at all, as shown when Nobunaga rather unceremoniously dismissed the weenie without a single drop of aura spent. It's just, you know, stab in the head, and you're done. Because it's not like you know any sort of Ken or Ko to be able to use your aura to block it. But that doesn't matter to the players because they don't know what they're missing, ignorance is bliss, and they're mostly taken in by the sudden manifestation of relatively mundane superpowers. However, they can make up for this lack of knowledge and experience with the sheer aura quantity. Because if the Chimera and Tark taught us nothing else, it's that a critical mass of aura can overwhelm even the greatest of Nen Masters. So for example, if a Hale player were to kill 1 million people, then that could end up with 1 million aura boosts, placing them in the realm of a Chimera and Royal Guard, or perhaps even King Meruem himself, when it comes to sheer aura quantity. That does make a lot of assumptions though. One is that there isn't a level cap, because there could be, level 100 may very well be the maximum, but look, even then, a level 100 player would still end up with vastly greater aura reserves than most pro hunters. We have a tendency to think of professional hunters as these absurdly powerful godly beings, but that's only because we generally focus on the amazing ones sitting right at the top, but in reality, the hunter association is flooded with primarily mediocre hunters. And then if the level system does go beyond 100, then it could have diminishing returns, granting less of an aura boost each time, like farming the same enemies in a very early area in a game. Can't just stick to one area or type, need to keep moving beyond. One other advantage Contagion does bring is that it allows the infected group to act as an end swarm. Individually, they may be inexperienced and at the moment very underpowered, but if you're up against 20 Nen users at once, then even Nen veterans are going to find themselves overwhelmed by unpredictable interactions. Speaking of, there are quite a few question marks surrounding Contagion and a lot of unknown interactions. For example, Marena is the game master, so we should keep in mind that it's always possible for her to introduce new rules or change existing rules. We know this because that's the basic idea of Nen modification. At any time, a Nen user who really wants to can invest into a new condition or restriction to add on to existing abilities. A great recent example of this would be none other than Crollo, who gave his bandit secret a delightful bookmark accessory. We still don't know what conditions were put on for that, but Crollo said that they were quite painful to achieve. So the idea is that you can always add new features so long as you're willing to pay a certain price. Nen is all about balance. For example, Morena wouldn't be able to change the rules of Contagion to suddenly assign 50 levels if you kill random instead of one level, because that would ruin the balance. Currently, princes are allowed to be worth a whopping 50 levels because they're nigh on impossible to access. And even if you did, good luck killing one of them with their guardian spirit beast defending them, along with all of the Nen using bodyguards. Alternatively, perhaps Morena could change the value, but the reward would be affected in direct correlation. So if randoms were worth 50 levels, then all that does is make each level's aura boost 50 times less. So you could end up with a level 100 player who only has the aura output of a level two player in the previous system, stuff like that. Another aspect we should always keep in mind is that Morena is not just the game master. She is also a game player. Furthermore, Morena is currently the highest level player sitting at a mighty level 45, meaning that she has killed quite a few people. At most, she's killed 45 randoms, and at the very least, she has killed four Nen users and five randoms. What I'm very curious about is what happens when Morena herself reaches level 100. Is she subject to her own rules? Does she become a new member zero and is allowed to infect another 22 people? Speaking of the 22, some Haley family members have died, and there is also a question as to whether Morena can replenish those numbers. Is it a flat 22 and no more? Or can Morena always keep a maximum of 22 infected devotees? Because if it's the latter, then this is an even more serious problem than I thought. And just, just to interrupt me here for a second, look, I'm watching me right now. Just to interrupt me, we do know the answer to that. Now Morena can indeed reinfect once her Haley family members have been lost, and now a big part of her plan is trying to infect someone close to Stridenek. So there can always be a maximum of 22 members. It means that you can't just gradually whittle the numbers down and eventually deal with the issue that way. No, you would need to exterminate the entire problem at once, poor man's row style. You either get everyone at the same time, or Morena just keeps spreading her saliva and multiplying. There's also the curiosity of what would happen if Contagion infected an existing Nen user. Right now, it's only been applied to people who previously had no knowledge, let alone control of aura. But for example, if Hisoka were to be infected, would this situation be the equivalent of playing Contagion on New Game Plus? He roams around, killing and killing, as, as you know he does, acquiring aura boosts, and even attaining a very sudden new and dangerous ability. I mean, even if it did function that way, I'm sure it's not quite that simple. 
people. Because this has yet to be confirmed, but I, I have a suspicion, that one of the restrictions for this ability is that the target needs to be devoted to Morena, and even potentially prove it in some way. Because otherwise, surely she would have infected everyone before staging the coup rather than after staging the coup. There's also a very morbid thought of, can Morena farm her own disciples? Essentially cultivate and grow them to become Rookie Nen users before consuming them to raise her own level. Because currently she would only need to sacrifice six of her followers to become a level 100. I don't know if she would ever do that, because in her own twisted way, she does seem to care and like genuinely love her followers. But then again, hard belief often calls for hard sacrifices. Perhaps even a sacrifice of Morena herself, which may be the most terrifying prospect of contagion in the future. Should Togashi continue down the path of Morena's Jesus-y themes, then I would not be surprised if she was sacrificed and became a martyr, which would of course invoke post-mortem Nen. Of everyone on the ship, Morena's desires are some of the most profoundly powerful. If she were to die, her ability would almost certainly linger on and just become stronger. Her remaining disciples may gain stronger aura boosts or even become game masters themselves, capable of setting rules and splintering off into their own various Nen cults, each with their own unique tenets of destruction. That's why this war makes me a little bit nervous at the moment, because currently the idea to deal with the problem is killing Morena, but that could just make things so much worse. Another alternative is that the Hale Lee family could have their own personal Judas, someone who betrays the others via mass slaughter and takes all of the delicious levels is for themselves. Because it really wouldn't be too difficult to kill eight or so amateur Nen users with the right ability. Or perhaps there are even multiple Judas's, Judai. Sort of following the path of the Chimera Ants. They started out as a relatively weak group working together, but as soon as they gained a decent amount of individual power, a lot of them split off wanting to pursue their own personal desires. Many of which was to become their own king. But this is a problem, a uh, big problem. No matter which way it goes actually, there, there's so many problems. Morena has unleashed a Nen cult disease. And even though we've managed to catch it at an earlier stage than the Chimera Ants, it's only a matter of time before it spirals completely out of control. And when that happens, I don't know just how helpful pigeon handcuffs are going to be to stop it.